So this is Palomar Airport, located in the north of San Diego County. And that embankment that you see the airplanes landing on is no ordinary embankment. It's actually what used to be a landfill. And the trash is actually still in there. So that's not the worst thing in the world because of what you're about to see with this Cessna landing. And this is a view from slightly further away from the runway. Beautiful little airplane there. And from this direction, we can actually see the runway. So I'm standing a little bit further up a hill. Along with that iconic Southern California palm tree. And the Cessna that's about to porpoise a little bit. It's alright though, it's probably a student pilot and they're learning. Touch down, almost flare up a little bit, and then actually touch down. Oop. And there we go. And you can see the runway has a little bit of a bumpiness to it, right? Where it kind of goes down and up and down. Uh, but it also is a little bit of height to it relative to those roads, which is kind of nice. And there's also some voluntary noise abatement procedures because there are some residential air neighborhoods in the area. But uh, as you can hear, the traffic is actually quite a bit louder than the airplanes. Or I should say the car traffic is quite a bit louder than the aircraft traffic. And just in case you don't believe me that this is built on a landfill, well, take a look at this chimney here. And I don't know if you can see the hot gases coming out of the top of there, but that's because that's where they're burning off the methane, which all landfills do produce. But here they have, uh, well, airplane and jet fuel, or avgas and jet fuel, uh, so they have to have that closed burner. Next up here is an example of a jet landing at the airport, viewed from the side of the runway. Because Cessnas can stop in, or a Cessna 172, I should say, can stop in like 500 feet, but the runway here is 5,000 feet almost. And sort of business jets and even regional airliners have no trouble landing at the runway. Nor do they have any problem taking off. And uh, climb out's a breeze too, although it does bring up one of the few complications at this airport, which is that uh, it's a bit of a steep drop off at the end, but uh, it's not really an issue for the most part. It's a golf course there. So let's leave the real world for a minute and take a look at the airport on Google Earth. So here's the runway, uh, runway 24 flying to the west and runway 6 if you're flying to the east. But uh, everything I'm showing you is runway 24 because the winds in San Diego near the coast are almost always from the west to the east because uh, the ocean is just right over here. And so taking a look, the pin right here is where I was showing the uh, landings. And so you can see that uh, this embankment here, like I was saying, keeps the terrain, keeps the runway actually above the surrounding terrain, uh, which makes it really easy to stay above all the obstacles while you're coming into land. Uh, and there are some hills uh, off to the east here, uh, but they're really not that substantial. Uh, and it's actually just quite a nice approach. Like, you can see, like, I think vaguely like this. 
Uh, in fact, on a nice clear day, uh, which this time of year is not super often, I can see all the way to the ocean on here, and it's really beautiful. Uh, uh, there is one thing about the airport that's mm, not the easiest thing in the world. Oh god, cursed Google Earth. Yeah. Um, there we go. That's uh, if you see uh, over on the uh, departure end uh, slash the arrival end of runway six. Uh, well, there it's a uh, instead of being a uh, you know a nice few feet above the surrounding area, it's kind of a steep drop off, but it's not that bad. It's not like a five hundred foot cliff or something. It's you know like a maybe one hundred and fifty foot you know just semi-steep hill uh, with some buildings at the bottom and a golf course in the area. Uh, and then there's also uh, some power lines in the area, which uh, they are on here, but they're kind of hard to see. Um, like the... Uh, let me find them for you. So they run uh, kind of through this area. Uh, zoom in. Zoom, there we go. There they are. Uh, see, there's power lines up on the top of this hill. Um, and you do have to be careful when you're climbing out not to run into them. But uh, other than that, taking off and landing here is uh, really nice. Uh, so let's uh, also in virtual land uh, take a look at this in the flight simulator. So we're here in the free and open source flight simulator flight gear, and I'm flying this lovely little twin engine Piper Seneca go ahead and let's hop into the cockpit view here and get over to that taxi line there. Take a look at the windsock. Confirm that we'll be using runway 24, which is the runway I was showing those airplanes take off and land from. Because remember, there's one for every airport. At every airport, every physical tarmac is represented as two runways, right? One in one direction, one in the other direction. And so runway 24 is the same as runway 06, just facing in opposite directions. So runway 24 is using this tarmac in the direction of 240 compass heading, 240 degrees from due north. Taxi up to the hold short line up there. Go ahead and check the flight controls real quick. Make sure the ailerons and elevator and rudder all function correctly. And go ahead and do run up check real quick. Make sure the spark plugs and the engines are working correctly. even though it's a simulator, so uh, pretty much 100% reliability unless you turn on failures, which I have not. All right, so if there was a control tower, I'd call one up and say, uh, Piper 301 Sierra Echo, holding short runway 24, request right close traffic. And then I say, Seneca 301 Sierra Echo, clear takeoff runway 24, right close traffic approved. And let's go ahead and get on the runway. And this airplane can easily take off in much less than the, uh, again, like 5,000 feet of runway available here. But let's just use best practices and always taxi right to the end there and follow this taxi line. So using all the available runway. And let's try to do this right to throttle up to the highest manifold pressure, not the highest RPM. Can you tell that in real life I'm uh, only a single engine, uh, low performance engine pilot? <laughs> Get up to 80 knots, which is the rotation speed in this airplane. Rotate. Hop off the runway, retract the landing gear. Beautiful overcast Southern California day. <laughs> And see, there's the power lines I was talking about, which 
are really pretty easy to clear. But of the handful of accidents that have happened at this airport, which are not that many considering how many airplanes take off and land at it every year, uh, one of them has involved crashing into the power lines. I think there's been about half a dozen accidents here in total over, like, you know, 50 years or something like that. Let's go ahead and turn crosswind here. Eh, alright, well, I overshot the pattern altitude a little bit, but that's fine. As the field elevation here is 330 feet, so we want to be at about 1,300 feet to fly 1,000 feet above the field elevation. But that's alright. Go ahead and turn downwind. Stay in the cockpit here. Try to get back down to correct altitude. And there's the runway. There's one of our beautiful estuaries that we have in San Diego County. And fly downwind here. Try to get back down to around 1,300 feet. There's some more power lines over to the other side of the runway, but they're also not much of a problem. Go ahead and slow down. Extend the landing gear. All right, there we go. Extend the flaps. And get ready to turn to the base leg. Alright, turn base before we get too close to those power lines. And see, there are some hills uh, to the east of the runway here, but they're really quite timid. I say, I, I actually learned how to fly in California's Central Valley, where everything is dead flat, and it's much easier than, like, this is one of the nicer general aviation airports in San Diego, although it's not quite my favorite, um, and it still has all these little caveats, although I think they're actually pretty easy to deal with, uh, but, uh, you know, people that have, like, learned to fly, you know, in Midwest, Great Plains states, or like me in the Central Valley, are just kind of like, will come to San Diego and realize that uh, San Diego County's airports all seem to have something funky about them. <laughs> uh, but this one is, uh, most of the funky things about it are actually kind of nice. All right, here I am uh, doing a not very good job of turning the final. All right, on center line, more or less on glide slope, a little low, but again, we're fine because the embankment is... Uh, making sure we're clear of obstacles. And let's go ahead and start flare. Usually should not add power while flaring, but I want to make this landing nice and smooth and I have lots of runway. All right, there we go. And we're back on the runway. Track flaps. And let's let's take a look at that landing in replay real quick. So R and let's hop outside the airplane so you can see. See, there's like this little valley where that road runs through right before the airport, and then there's the runway on the embankment. So following the glide slope, you'll never be in any danger of hitting anything. Uh, although there have, again, been a couple of accidents where people were way off in, on the other side, uh, towards those hills way to the south of the runway, and they managed to impact them. But people that were actually uh, coming from the correct direction, facing the correct direction, and on glide slope are 
very, very safe. There's a nice smooth touchdown for you. So yeah, that's uh, how to fly uh, traffic pattern at uh, Palomar Airport. It's uh, one of my favorite airports in San Diego County, although it seems like just about every uh, airport, general aviation uh, wise, or uh, our main international airport uh, has something weird about it that makes them all a little bit challenging to land at. But uh, this one is, uh, in some ways, is my not quite my favorite. That that would be Gillespie Field. Uh, but this is a really nice little airport. It's just uh, fairly expensive to keep airplanes here, although I've never owned an airplane. I've always rented, but uh, rental rates are usually a little more expensive here as a result. And uh, it can get a little busy. But uh, yeah, it's a really nice little airport. Not too hard to take off or land from. Nice long runway. And if you're ever uh, in the area flying a general aviation airplane, I uh, recommend checking it out. Although, uh, you know, don't make it uh, too crowded. <laughs> Because uh, just like everything else in San Diego, it's kind of perpetually crowded. But, uh, you know, I always like to uh, welcome any, any any part of the community, non the aviation community, or people in general, nonetheless. So, uh, yeah. Maybe this little parking spot here. That's Palomar Airport for you. One of my favorites. And... Uh, why I think landing on a literal pile of trash is actually uh, pretty nice.